Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe and explain the effect of the concentration of reactants or the pressure of reacting gases on the rate of a chemical reaction. Now this can seem like a tricky topic so you might want to watch this video a couple of times. Over the last couple of videos we've looked at the rate of chemical reactions. We've seen that reactions are rapid initially. Over time reactions slow down and finally reactions stop. Now, we can explain the shape of this curve using a key idea in chemistry, and that's called collision theory. Collision theory states that chemical reactions can only take place when the reacting particles collide with each other, and the collisions must have sufficient energy. The rate of a chemical reaction is determined by the frequency of successful collisions, and the word frequency means the number of successful collisions per second. Going back to our graph, we can explain the shape using collision theory. Reactions are rapid initially because we've got a large number of reactant molecules. This means that we've got a large number of collisions per second. Over time, reactions slow down because the number of reactant molecules is running out. That means that we've got a smaller number of collisions per second. Finally, the reaction stops because all of the reactant molecules have run out. This means that the number of collisions per second is now zero. In this video, we're looking at the effect of concentration of reactants, or the pressure of a gas, on the rate of a reaction. I'm showing you here two containers. Each container is holding particles that can react with each other. We're going to assume that these particles are dissolved in water, although I'm not showing you the water molecules. And you'll notice that both of the containers have the same volume. Remember that the rate of reaction depends on the number of successful collisions per second. In the right-hand container, we've got twice the number of particles in the same volume. In other words, the concentration of particles is twice that of the container on the left. This means that in the right-hand container, the number of collisions per second will be twice that of the left-hand container. Because of that, the rate of reaction in the right-hand container will be twice that on the left. Because the rate increases if we increase the concentration, we can say that the rate is proportional to the concentration. I should point out that this also applies to reactions in a gas. In this case, the right-hand container would have a higher gas pressure, but the principle is the same. Now, if we plot the quantity of product for these reactions, then we can see that the lines look different. Firstly, the higher concentration is a faster reaction, and we can tell that because the line's steeper. Secondly, with the higher concentration, we get more product at the end. That's because we started with more reactant molecules at the start. In the next video, we'll be looking at a required practical investigating the effect of concentration on the rate of a reaction. Remember, you'll find plenty of questions on the effect of concentration on the rate of reaction in my revision workbook, and you can get that by clicking on the link above. Okay, so hopefully now you should be able to describe and explain the effect of the concentration of reactants, or the pressure of reacting gases, on the rate of a chemical reaction.